much for joining me uh, today. We are talking about Java 1.8. Uh, something that hasn't even been released yet, but it is coming out in a month, so I figured uh, I'd get a head start. Um, I wanted to talk about the beer I'm drinking. This is the Surly Abrasive Ale, and it's a double IPA, more of a, mm, a British style. It's really good. I don't know. I don't know how much you guys want me to talk about the beer. I love to talk about it, but uh, let's talk about code. All right, like I said, we're talking about Java 1.8. And I'm going to go over a couple of the new features. Um, this will probably be broken into two parts because it might get a little bit long. Um, I'm going to be talking about functional interfaces, converting anonymous interclasses into lambdas, and uh, let's see here, switching to streams uh, over some other ways of doing it, and default methods on interfaces. So to show you all of these these items, I'm going to be modifying a library that I've written called Jink2XML. And Jink2XML is a playoff of link to XML. And it's an easy way to parse XML documents in Java. And when I say easy, I mean uh, with a very concise syntax. And what's really cool is a lot of the stuff that I've written here lends itself really well to some of these new features that I'm going to talk about. Let's talk about Jink to XML a little bit. Let's look in the tests. Uh, let's look at hello.jink um, and then hello.xml. So I have this very simple XML document that has a root node and a hello node with a text world in it. And to parse that and to print out hello world, you simply load the document by calling load, pass in the file name, and give it the root node. And then call root.single, pass in the node name, so it'll grab the only hello node. And then you print the name of the node and the value of the node concatenated together to get hello world. Uh, let me just run that for you here to prove it. Uh, run as Java application. So as you can see, it printed out hello world. Woo so uh, now we're going to hop right into the code and start talking about uh, updating it to use Java 1.8. So the first thing we're going to talk about is functional interfaces. And functional interfaces in Java 1.8 are simply interfaces that define one abstract method, and that's it. So I actually have written, on accident, a year ago, a whole bunch of these functional interfaces that I use in Jink to XML. Hmm. And I'm going to show you how to convert them into functional interfaces. And it's rather trivial, and actually you don't have to do anything at all, in fact and they work right out the bat, but Java 8 has given us this new annotation. It's called functional interface. And if you annotate your functional interface with this method, or with, with this annotation, it will make sure that your code adheres to the functional interface pattern, which is only one abstract method. So if I try to add another one, Uh, it's actually going to complain up here. It says, oh, you can't see my tooltips, but it says invalid functional interface annotation. Action is not a functional interface. So it very clearly tells you what's wrong. Uh, so that's why it's really good to, if you're planning on writing a functional interface, annotate it with the functional interface annotation. So we don't want that, though. All right. So now this is back to being a functional interface. So I'm going to go through and find all my functional interfaces and annotate them. So I've done action. Action with index is similar. One virtual method, or abstract method. Converter, one abstract method. Jode equality comparer, one abstract method. And Jode filter, one abstract method. Oh, and there's one more over here. So now I've converted, uh, without writing any code actually, all of my interfaces that can be, and it's all of them, into functional interfaces. So this will help us use the next feature we're going to talk about, which is lambdas. And lambdas is a very succinct way to write a function, essentially. Uh, where it's going to be used mostly is as a replacement for anonymous uh, anonymous inner classes. 
So let's look at some examples of anonymous inner classes. All right, so here we have an example of anonymous inner class. So on JoJoList, we have a method called distinct, which re returns a distinct set of nodes based on this comparer. If I hop into the Jode Equality Comparer, Jode Equality Comparer, you'll see this is one of our functional interfaces. And I'm using a calling new on the interface and creating a anonymous inner class. And this code is as succinct as you could write it in Java 1.7. But now with the lambdas, you can actually uh, do something really cool and throw a lambda in here instead. And a lambda takes the form of parameter declaration. So just like you're declaring it in a method here, it's parameter de declaration, then the arrow, and then your function body, which is going to be this. So I'm going to, without writing, with writing as little as code as possible, uh, convert this into a lambda. So it's really simple, and I'm just going to take the initial code here and cut it up and turn it into the lambda. So I have cut out just the function declaration, and I've added an arrow sign. And that's it. Um, that's how easy it is to convert that into a, a lambda. So we have here our parameter de declaration, and then here is the function body. Uh, but they also get, there's, a, there's a much more succinct way to write these. So here I'm declaring the specific parameters, uh, types, and a specific body with a return. Uh, the shorthand version is you can you can remove those types. Uh, Java will infer them from the type of interface that we're passing in. And you can re just delete the method body and the return. And, you're, and you end up with something like this. And that's those are terrible value variable names. So you end up with something like this with your parameter declaration and then an expression that returns the value that it expects. All right, let's back up to where we were when we started. All right, so this code creates a new Jody equality compare, implements the equal method, returns that the names equal each other. And now the new version, so much prettier. Uh, and it, it probably even compiles to the exact same code. I'm not 100% sure on that. But it's really doing the exact same thing in such a, a, a better piece of code to read and a much easier and shorter uh, piece of code to write. All right, so let's do one more example of that just to hammer that down. Uh, the filter method. This takes a Jode filter, uh, which is um, uh, one of my, sorry, one of my functional interfaces, a Jode filter with one method, except that takes in a Jode and returns a Boolean. Uh, let's re replace this monstrosity of code with a Lambda. So we're gonna do the exact same thing we did last time. Cut out the, uh, the method body and drop it in, and then put in the arrow. Once again, we can clean it up. And if there's only one parameter, you can remove those parentheses Remove that, those braces, the, and once again, we're left with a super, super succinct piece of code. So let's look at where it was before. All right, um, kind of gross and ugly. You've got all this cruft of new Jode filter, and then override, public boolean accept, return, all of this extra boilerplate that isn't doing anything. Then I end up back here with just the crux of what the code does. Once again, this is probably compiling to the exact same thing. Uh, it's just a much better way to write it and much easier to read. Thank you so much for watching part one of my Java 8 preview. Um, I will be releasing this video in two parts. So the next part will have more Java 1.8 stuff. The next two things, including streams and default methods on interfaces. Um, but this is it for this one. If you really enjoyed this one and want to know when I post the next one, please subscribe as well as like just to let me know that you liked it. Um, thanks so much for watching. I finished my beer. Um, so here's some water.
Cheers.